I want my cups to have the feel that someone has cared about them, that someone has taken care of them throughout the process, nurturing them more or less. Um, and sending it along to people who continue caring about them is something that's important for me. <laughs> I'm looking at a pot fired in a wood kiln. You can turn it all the way around, seeing the two different sides fired towards the chimney or towards the fire. You see a landscape, a change all the way around. I'm making quite a different pot from one side to the next. Um, leaving room for development in the viewer, for instance. Sometimes you might like one side and it might change to another side before the story is over, so to speak. This pot has been fired in an anagama kiln for four days. It's a dark stonework clay with a porcelain slip slipped quite loosely to this line. This form is thrown but I've trimmed out the foot and also trimmed a little bit up here as you can see. So you have a kind of soft feel here, a little bit harder here where I've trimmed out the foot. You can see clearly how this has been reduction cool as the clay is quite black. Um, and you can see the sprinkles of ash inside the pot as the heavy ash has fallen down into it. And that tells me that this pot has been quite much in the front of the kiln where this heavy, heavy ash still flies with the flame through the kiln. This ash won't reach the back end of the kiln. So, in the back of the Anagama kiln, I usually make some glazed pots. Um, I find the glaze when fired for a so, so long time with a lot of extra um, deposits on it through the flame, through the ash that reaches it, which can change quite a lot and make something very interesting. So this um, cup is a dark stoneware with an ash glaze glazed to this point. Then I sweep with my finger away around here to make that meeting between glazed and unglazed a little bit wavy and less hard. The uh, ash glaze is very thin, so it kind of mottly looking differently all the way around, as you can see. I have a large iron speck here as iron has moved out through the clay into the clay space. I've done a small trimming out of the foot here. Um, Actually, it's not needed because the feel of the pot, I wanted to stand quite firmly onto the tabletop and looking like it's sprouting out like a flower through the earth. With this type of shape as well. But I trimmed out the base because I, I feel the base needs some attention. Um, all along the line that I want to give attention to the pot and uh, you might store your pots the cups into the cabinet um, upside down and you see that uh, or you'll wash them out after using them and you'll see this it will be um, something extra so I like that so make uh, pots or cups in every technique I can find. So this is a, a small cup fired in an in a electric kiln. It's a light stoneware clay 
with quite a lot of sand in it. You can see a large sand particle uh, flowing out here. Then there's, I've actually dipped this cup into uh, uh, earthenware glaze, no, earthenware slip that's turned into a glaze at these temperatures and then a clear glaze on top of that. And this earthenware glaze will make the clear glaze flow quite a lot. So I've done these rims, indentations and lines on the inside to collect that and pool it, making a decorative effect of the natural flowing of the glaze. So, <clears throat> when talking about bases, I think this one is special as well. It doesn't have a clear definition of a base either, so it's quite similar in shape. Um, shaping this tulip shape or what what you want to call it it's a light stoneware clay fired in an anagama kiln with a vitreous slip on top and you can see how i slipped the pot because i put one finger here and um, three fingers here and i poured inside poured out and dipped it and then i've actually blown with my uh, like this so I moved a little bit of the excess away here and I've blown at the base as well. So here it's very, very thin. So you can see this is the clay color, but this is the clay when you have a little bit of this vitreous slip on top and it's turned this clear brown. And I like that because the foot is so mm, subtle uh, in the meeting towards the outer shape, but with the, but with this, brown color it's, it pops out or pops in even you see this nice meeting here yeah. i like the feel when picking this cup up because i have to be quite delicate as it's kind of wide and if it's filled with something have to be stable. Mm. Yeah. So this cup there is uh, something you see all around the world actually to great perfection th throughout history I would say it's uh, in Britain you call it slipware in Japan you call it kohiki um, in Korea pushyong it's all the same thing in essence it's a dark stoneware clay or a dark clay with a white slip on top and a clear glaze and with those three elements you can make quite a lot of different effects this one is um, fired in a salt, wood-fired salt kiln and I've applied the white slip with a brush you can see the whirl down here and uh, something special with this cup is over here you can see a pinkish blush inside the white glaze, a white slip yeah. and that's from uh, the whiteness of this clay is quite cold when looking at it and that's because we reduced this kiln when firing it. So it turns everything cold in color. But during cooling at some point oxygen entered the kiln again. And when reaching the clear glaze it couldn't go through but here I had a small, small pinhole in the glaze from the natural parts in the clay and glaze and so on. And uh, that made um, that a possible way in for the oxygen. And you can see that oxygen and oxygen has actually moved into that pinhole, moved under the glaze and affected the slip here, turning it pinkish. 
but sometimes it's quite a hard effect even where we've done the clay or slip rather blue throughout through the firing and you get these really orange spots on it and it almost looks like a disease so I like this more subtle effect and it happens just a little bit something small to find in your pot uh, over the course of time as Evic pot has when fired these ways with these organic materials with these organic techniques in lack of a better word